Good morning, everybody. A very warm welcome to you all as we look at God's Word. Um, I think, too, it's important to remember, I think, is Nigel out preaching this morning? Next door, and Derek's in Oswald Street. So remember them, too, as they share God's Word in the places that they are this morning. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us as we look at your word this morning, that you'll make it real and alive, and that you'll help us to understand your word today, Lord. Amen. And also ask, pray, continue to pray for our children and our grandchildren, those who've got children and grandchildren that don't know you yet, Lord. We bring them before you. It's burdening me as we see the world in the way it is, And you just think, Lord, save them. And so remember your children and those of you who have grandchildren, that they turn to you. That's not what I'm preaching on, but there we are, just. (laughs) So, how well do you really know someone? A husband, a wife, a child, a mother, father, a best friend? Someone here in church, or maybe a work colleague? How well do you know them? And how do you get to know someone? You spend time with them. You talk to them. An important part, you listen to them. You start to build a picture of their likes and dislikes, their favorite things, hobbies, food, colors, music, other interests, or whether or not you get on with somebody or not after you've spent time with them. What about people in church? How well do we know each other? Well, I know for sure that Keith doesn't like strimming hedges and grass, because I saw him the other day and it looked painful. (laughs) But it had to be done. I know that Maureen and Jenny, who isn't here, love flowers and have a real gift and a talent for arranging flowers. And I know so many of you you got hospitality as a gift, or sharing or praying with people, or pastoral. There's so many different things about each and every one of us. But take Rob. You don't have to take him. (laughs) He's not good with flowers. (laughs) Rob. For those who don't know, it's my husband. How well do I know him? Well, in a couple of weeks, we will have been married 23 years. I know he doesn't look it, does he? (laughs) We were engaged before that. Before that, friends. And the first time we got to know each other was in this church. He came in and he sat at the back. And they roped him in to play the guitar. And he's never stopped since. (laughs) But I know he loves music. I know he likes the guitar. He comes home from work and his wind down is, well, I'm getting tea. He sits and plays the guitar. Thinking of new songs, coming up with new tunes. He also loves bikes. Motorbikes. Proper bikes. <laughs> and his favourite colour is blue. There you go. So he didn't plan that, I didn't. He also likes seeing how things work and how they go together and how he can pull them apart and put them back together. He also loves creation and all that it is encompasses. And you know, more importantly, he loves God. Now, saying all that, I don't always know what he's thinking. <laughs> Even though I've been with him a long time, I don't always know what he's thinking. And I don't need to know. I know some things that wind him up. <laughs> and he could probably say the same about me. But you know, God knows. God knows about me, God knows about Rob, and God knows about you. And we are going to look at a psalm about that today. Now, I didn't get inspired by some lovely Italian music 
that Rob did last week for his psalm, but by an old hymn. When I was thinking about the psalm and what God wanted me to speak on today, it was a hymn that came into my mind. And so often hymns and songs do that, don't they? Something just comes into your mind. And we're going to sing it to finish. I asked Rob if we could. I said, I know it's one that we've not done here for a very long time, but I asked if we could sing it to finish. We're going to look at Psalm 139. This is a very personal and a very intimate psalm that was written by David. It's a prayer from beginning to end, but it's a prayer that is filled with beautiful truth and insights about who God is and who we are. So if you want to turn with me in your Bibles or on your phones to Psalm 139. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and you search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways even before a word is on my tongue. Behold, O oh Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in, behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for the darkness is as light with you. For you formed me, you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them the days that were formed for me, when at yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, there would be more than the sand. I awake, and I am still with you. Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God! O men of blood, depart from me! They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with a complete hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any grievous way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What a wonderful psalm. Don't really need to say any more, do you? It's all there. But I'll, I'll say a bit more. But what a wonderful psalm, full of so much 
You know, what a gift that God gave to David to write something like that. Such a personal, as I said, an intimate prayer. The psalm is divided into sections. And the first six verses talks about God knows all about us. He has searched us and knows us and loves us. As I said before, okay, I don't know everything about Rob, but I know quite a lot. Why? I'm going to be soppy because I love him (laughs) and I've spent time with him. But God knows everything about each and every one of us. We sang, "Does does God know all about me? Well, the answer is yes. And Psalm 139 tells us this. God knows when we sit and when we stand. Isn't that amazing? He cares about those little details. He knew you walked into church and you sat down. How great is that? God knows when we sit and where we stand. He cares about us. He cares about when you lie down, when you're tired. He knows your thoughts and what you are going to say even before you say it. Scary. A bit, isn't it? When we stop and we think about everything we say and we do, God knows before you do it. He knows you inside and out, the good and the bad, the hairs on your head, it tells us in the Bible. He knows the number. What detail. What, how amazing that he knows how many hairs are on your head. He wants to protect you. It tells us, doesn't it? In some verses it says he wants to hem me in. In other versions it says he wants to hedge you in. And they had those to protect their flock or protect their property. That's why people have hedges. And that's what God wants to do with us. He hems us in. Such knowledge is too wonderful, says David. That's amazing, isn't it? It must have been mind-blowing. David must have been sitting there with this absolute awe of everything that God had done for him. God knows you intimately. Why? Because he made you and he loves you. Now, the next six verses, 7 to 12, talks about God is with us everywhere. Do you know, we all have a deep desire to be known and to be loved. Up to a point, perhaps. Do we really want everything to be known? Some things about us we would rather perhaps remain unknown. And the psalm tells us, where can we go to escape God's presence? Where can we hide from God? Well, we can't. He's there. He is omnipresent, everywhere at once. He knows you and he cares for you because each one of us is precious to God. Talks about he pursues us to restore that relationship with him. The Bible also tells us that the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. That was us. We were lost and God sought us. And for those of us who have given our lives to to Christ, he's found us. The next three talk about creation. Verses 13 to 16. God made us, created us, the God of all knowledge, the God of all presence, had the care and concern to knit you together in your mother's womb. Those verses just amaze you, don't they? Just amaze you. You didn't arrive in the hospital or at home and then God said, well, I'm going to care for you now when you suddenly appeared in the world, 
You were fearfully and wonderfully made. Have you ever used one of these? Biscuit cutter. <laughs> Makes little gingerbread men or nice biscuits. Well, do you know what? <laughs> That's not how God made you. It's good, isn't it? He didn't make you that we all came out exactly the same like these little you can have one after. All these little biscuits. He didn't make us like that, did he? Sorry, I didn't make any. I'm not creative, am I? But he Pardon? You nearly opened them last night. Oh. <laughs> See, you can't get anything, can you? <laughs> but he didn't make us like that. Each of us is one of a kind. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes I think, I don't think they need to be two of me. <laughs> Each of us is one of a kind. You're a special design. If he had wanted us all to look alike, he would have made us that way. But instead, he took the time to make you just the way you are. You are precious in his sight. So the next time you see one of those, you just remember, God didn't make you that way. We are all different. We have different talents, different gifts, different abilities, different interests. A quote, God created us for a reason and a purpose. The reason is to know him, to love him, and to have fellowship with him. And living in fellowship with God, we have a life that is fulfilled and complete. We are not here by accident. It tells us, doesn't it? David said, I was being made in secret. It was a secret. You see, the world in David's time didn't have scans and 3D or 4D imaging. Now we know a lot of what happens inside as a baby develops. But David talks about it was in secret. They didn't know. Isn't that amazing? You were made in secret. So next time you think about that, and you, I mean, when we sometimes watch One Born Every Minute, I don't know if you've ever seen it, it's not for the faint hearted, it's. But it always gets wrong when he sees the birth of a baby. Just think, wow, isn't that amazing? However hard, you know, isn't it? <laughs> we know. It's hard. But it's amazing. Absolutely. We are not here by accident. Did you know I read a fact the other day that the brain is cap capable of holding information that could fill 500 miles of bookshelves? That's, an un that's not... <laughs> well, I don't know what you're going to do with that fact, but it just amazed me brain inside your head is capable of holding that much information. Wow, that's incredible, isn't it? Don't we serve an incredible God? And David's response to this in verses 17 and 18, how amazing God is. How precious that God thinks of me. More than the grains of sand. We don't Rob said it before, I didn't know he was going to say that, but when we don't see people for some time, they can go out of your mind. When people, you're in their presence, yes, you remember them, and you might go away and you remember them, but if you don't see somebody for a long time, sometimes that memory can fade a bit, and then it's, when you reunite, it's like, oh, you remember all those things about them. But that's not with God. He thinks of you often. Isn't that lovely that he thinks of you often? And then David says, and it's like a surprise, when I awake, you're still there, God. <laughs> he's, he's there. Mind-blowing, isn't it? That God thinks of you often. Then the tone changes in the psalm. And we move on to verses 19 to 22, and it's a real heart-wrenching prayer from David. He's upset by those that don't know and follow God. 
And you know, we should be too. It should burden us. It should cause us to really, you know, get down on our knees and pray. He prays about those who hate God and say horrible things about (coughs) God. And that's really hard because we see it all around us. In the world, we see what happens when people turn their backs on God. Quote, when man puts God out of his mind, then man will do whatever he pleases. And we see it, don't we, so much. We see the results of that more and more. What happens when you move, remove the basis of morality? The Bible tells us, and we've got it up there, while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. All have sinned, but all of us have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. And God cannot look on sin. But he loves us. And we should hate sin because it separates us from God and that is why God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. Why? Because I'm a sinner too. And it's so easy to point the finger at other people of the wrong things that's all going on, but it's no different to what I've done or what any of us have done. And David, it burdened him, didn't it? He didn't want to see that. But then he ends with such a humble ending and he asks God, search me, O God. Is there anything that needs to be changed in me or us? Show us. Help me to change. And our destination, the way everlasting. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, God knew David better than David knew David. And you know, God knows us better than we know ourselves, better than we do. We can try to sometimes put on a front. Sometimes we're not always real. But we can't be like that with God because he knows too much about us. And the praise and prayer of this psalm to the God who knows all and is everywhere. You know, this is a very, very precious psalm and a prayer. And it's not to be said lightly. Be careful how you pray it. Because if you pray it and you mean it, You have to act upon it. We ask God and we pray. God, you have searched us and you know us. Try us, work in us and lead us in your way everlasting. I'm going to finish with this. Think of this. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, Whatever circumstances have invaded your life, good or bad, our Heavenly Father is aware of it. He is so great, he is so good all the time. God knows us completely. How well do we know him? There's the challenge.